of the Lord Jesus Christ because He died for your sins, that you were covered. There is nothing that's going to separate you from the love of God and the ministry He has for you. I'm a motivational speaker and, and I encourage a lot of students to dream big. Did you know that as Christians, we should be the dreamers of today? Why? Why? Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. For we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. All things. To get through anything. To do things. So, my question to you is how big are you dreaming? How big are you dreaming? How big is your ministry going to be next week, 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Now, when we're getting into ministries, we do two things wrong. Firstly, if I say my dream and goal is to become a speaker. Now, we have to see what sort of speaker I am, if I get nervous in front of 10,000 people, if I can travel to the other, other side of the world, logically speaking, okay? If my content's good enough, you understand. That's what we do when we want to See how far we're going to go. What's our potential? Well, I can do this and that and that. No. If you want to see your full potential in your ministry from today, do not focus on your capabilities. No. Focus on your availabilities. When you make yourself available for God's work in and through you to reach out to the world in different ministries, Guess what's going to happen? I'm telling you some wonderful things are going to happen because they're happening to me already and it's just the beginning. Now, the other thing that we do wrong with ministries is this. I used to, I used to hold missionaries in such high esteem because they go out to the other side of the earth with diseases and flies and bugs and you name it, it's all there. And they still do it and they're glorifying God through it all. Praise God. So what I had was I had the missionaries up the top, then I had the preachers, then you had... I don't know, uh, what else you got? You got the Sunday school teachers, then you got, you know, the grandmas, and then you got the children. All in order. See, that's wrong. But subconsciously, we do that sometimes. That is so wrong. If God has, sorry, if God has called you to do something, a ministry, you do it with all your heart, and He will bless you. He will value your ministry so much that He will not be able to value it anymore. You understand what a ministry is? A smile. A smile to a stranger. Love. Some people have gifts for missionaries. Some people have gifts for, gifts for preaching. Prayer warriors. Being a grandma to other children. Those are all ministries. Praise God for that. Another way that God helps us to get back up is remind us where we were from. When you're down and you think, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? God, where are you? Sometimes you feel so far away from God. You sometimes feel that the last person on God's mind is you. Because what happened to me was this. I was challenged so much with this. That I, I would do something wrong. I'd fail God the whole day. And then that day, I, I would ask for forgiveness. And I'd feel real good. And I'd turn on Rebecca St. James. And, and I know that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm forgiven. And then the next day, guess what? Nick does the exact same thing. Satan comes to me and says, Nick, are you serious about your relationship with God? You say that he's, he's, the, he's the love of your life. God doesn't want to hear from you. You already failed him. You're abusing his grace. That is a lie. For as long as we hunger and thirst for righteousness, there is nothing that's going to separate you from your relationship with God. Why does he keep things and, and challenge us? Why does he let us be challenged with things over and over again? One, to sober us, to make sure that we know that we are nothing without Him. Two, to help others that are going through the same struggle and encourage others. That's the reason. It's for our own good. It's the glory. That's the glory. You know how I was... Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Dreaming big. I, I, I think, you know, I, say, I can get up here and, and say, yeah, dream big. But how big can we dream? How big is our God? You know what we do sometimes? We put God in a little box. And, and you know, we're going to say, yeah, this problem is a bit you know, too big for God, but this problem may be a bit too small. He's too busy. Don't worry about it. We put God in a little box, and every time He's going to 
you know, every now and then he's going to poke his head out and say, hey, I'm here. He's not going to force himself out of that box, though. You have to get him out of that box. I pray that you see your God as big as my God, because my God is big. How big can you dream? I ask the students at schools, does anyone know the awesome thing about a blank check is? Hello? Ah, you can put as much money as you want. So I ask the kids, well, how much money do you want to get? I go, oh, I'll have a million dollars. Okay, more. They're like, what? Okay, and she goes, another girl goes, 505, oh, sorry, 555 gazillion dollars. I said, more. Finally, someone says, infinity. <laughs> infinity. Do you know it's infinity? Girls, are you ready? Ready for this shopping spree? Ready? <laughs> infinity, infinity is like 999 gazillion dollars every microsecond. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're like, Whoa! What would you do with all this money? Well, you would first die of a heart attack 10 times. But what would you do? You would go out and you'd buy all the things you want. Your 10 hundred Lamborghinis, your massive mansion, everything that you want. You would say, Nick, well, my goals and dreams would finally be fulfilled with money. Right. Well, not everyone here is going to get 999 gazillion dollars every microsecond. But if you do receive a check, please give me a call and I'll be your accountant for the rest of your life. <laughs> I'm serious, yeah? Okay, I've got business cards at the back. Yeah, who wants to hear a joke? Anyone want to give me a hand? <laughs> I've got a doctor waiting up the back. I was joking. I just came up with it today. I love, I love... God gives you a blank check every day. And guess what you can do with it? You can fill out all the goals and dreams that you want to achieve. How big do you want to achieve? If it's God's will, it'll happen in His time. And if not, He's got something bigger. Praise God for that. I, as you know, I I, um, struggled with with the, the worry of not getting married, of, of not being able to hold my wife's hand, to have a family, to have a hope and a future. But just focusing on <clears throat> the, my other half sort of thing, pretty much my wife sort of prayer that I've got, it's the greatest desire just about of my life. The greatest desire for me is to be a living sacrifice for God every single day. And, you know, we're human, we fail, but... Just stick with him. But the, pretty much the second greatest desire of my life is to find my wife. To, not to find my wife, to, to, to meet my wife and know that she's the one and have that peace and have that great life. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day. February 14th, every year for about seven or eight years in a row, I was depressed because all the hot chicks, they got all the truckloads of roses. And all the good looking guys and like the tall and athletic and big bicep guys would get them. But I never got a rose. I know you're all very shocked because I'm very, very good looking. <laughs> I've never received a rose and I, I prayed to God one day. I said, God, can you do me a favor and, and can you give me, can you let my first Valentine's rose be being given from my very first love? 